Hello everyone, this is Big Money Chasing Big Money and here I am with another exchange review. This time I'm taking a closer look at Bing X. This is something that was requested by some of you in the comments and I have been keeping my eyes open about the exchange, especially because of the advanced copy trading platform that they have. While doing my research, I found other interesting points about Bing X. If you want to know more, watch the video until the end, you will not regret it. Before even thinking about registering an account for an exchange, I always investigate the origins, the founders, I just like to know where my money is going. I have to say that it was rather difficult to find extensive information about BingX and its executives. Top tier exchanges like to have their leaders on display, be it CZ, Jesse Powell, Brian Armstrong or Gracie Chen for that matter. They all build trust in users by being fully open to the public. BingX, however, is keeping things under wraps. There is not a lot of information available online. This got my attention and encouraged me to do some deep digging. Turns out BingX used to be Bingbon before they rebranded. Bingbon was a digital asset exchange owned by Grand Shores Technology Ltd. based in Singapore, also listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Although I could not verify this particular piece of information, some further investigation revealed that one of the parent companies of Grand Shores Technology appears to be Digital Currency Group, which is the biggest investor in the field of crypto. DCG is a controversial company. One of their subsidiaries is Genesis, which got into trouble when Three Arrows Capital, Terra and FTX pulled the rug. And up to this day, they owe millions of dollars to their creditors. Nonetheless, the other investments of DCG are absolutely solid, like Coinbase, Ripple or Brave and other reputable ventures. Therefore, I wouldn't paint a bad picture of BingX just because at the end of the ownership chain they might have DCG. On top of all this, BingX has an impressive collection of operating licenses around the globe. They have the MSB for the US, Canada, they also have the registration in Lithuania, which makes them legit in Europe, and one in Australia's Austrac. All this makes BingX rather reliable in terms of compliance, and it is clear that they take operational legal aspects quite seriously. All things considered, I would have appreciated some more transparency about the company background and overall structure, but the track record of BingX seems to be absolutely fine as they have been operating since 2018, apparently without any incidents. Their territorial focus has been Asia and now they are expanding globally. Their product line has been developing rapidly and by 2023 BingX offers one of the most comprehensive, most user-friendly lineup in the industry. KYC is not mandatory for users, actually the only difference between identified and private users is the maximum daily withdrawal amount, which is capped at 50k USD for private accounts. For fully KYC users, well, they have no limits whatsoever to withdraw. Now let's see what BingX has to offer when it comes to spot trading. In spot, there are three main points I always check. One is the range of assets with ample market depth, two is the available chains for deposits and withdrawals, and three, the security and proof of reserves. In terms of range of assets, there is no shortage of available coins and tokens. There are several hundred different projects you can choose to buy and trade, and the great thing is that these are separated into different categories, first by trading pair and then by asset category, like the liquid staking bunch and the GameFi, meme coins, metaverse, etc. The emerging tokens category is where you can find some of the, let's say, experimental projects, which usually have a rather thin order book and the purchase price can easily slip depending on liquidity. Interestingly enough, Solana is still listed in this group, not sure why, but the others seem to be the real up-and-comer projects waiting to be discovered. The chains on which you can move your spot assets around are plenty, I would say anything the normal user would want to see, it's probably there. Just out of curiosity, I checked if BingX already supports the new Chili's mainnet, unfortunately not, it is still exclusive to some of the major players in the field like BitGet and Binance. Uh, of course, it's just one example, the rest of the established alternative chains are mostly supported, so even the small cap tokens can be moved around between exchange wallets on their native chains. Needless to say, security is crucial. Even though CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko say that there is no proof of reserves available on BingX, the platform states differently. 
I like investigating these things, so I went ahead and read the report which was carried out by Mazar, a reputable and prestigious advisory firm. I work with them in my day-to-day -day job and I was happy to see that they took the challenge of auditing the reserve data. As I read through the document which was called the report, I realized that it was done by a South African branch of Mazar delivered to the Australian branch of Bingex. I'm not sure I like this type of approach where checks and controls are done by satellite entities and also the value date of the inspection of the balances is in 2022 uh, November, so basically it's from a year ago. It also seems to me like it's a report that only reflects on the numbers on a specific date and time and it doesn't go into how exactly the reserves are guaranteed. The reason for this is that this was just the job that Mazar was hired to perform. They just simply checked if all the assets were there at a certain point in time, as was requested by Bingax. Now this is not to say that I suspect foul play or any shenanigans going on, but it might serve as some explanation as to why there is a conflict with CMC and CG about the proof of reserves. Futures, in other words derivatives, are always a rather complex aspect when it comes to exchanges. Trading can be made comfortable and convenient and also quite annoying and frustrating even by the smallest little feature that is built in to the trading platform. Right off the bat I have to say I was happy to see that in order to start trading derivatives users need to pass a test to make sure that they just don't simply gamble away their assets. In the case of Bingex my general feeling is that they are doing their best to make sure that futures trading can be as easy and simple as it gets. An overly simplistic panel however is not suitable for the professionals as they would require all the possible tools in the arsenal to make sure that they make most out of the exchange. Probably this is the reason why Bingex has two separate categories for futures. One is perpetual futures and the other one is standard futures. Perpetual futures is one for the pros. There we have trading view as a default in the terminal area. All the panels are the well-known pro setup, no surprises there. Standard futures, however, looks lighter, leaner and simple altogether. Apart from the visuals, there are two differences in operations. While perps will charge a transaction fee both when opening and closing a position, standard will only charge you a fee upon closing a position. However, there is no spread on perps, but there is some on standard. Unfortunately, there is no telling what the actual spread is, but I'm guessing that whatever amount is lost by not charging anything for opening a position, the exchange makes it up by difference in the spread. The other significant difference between the two is the trading mode. On perps, you have one-way mode, which means that you have one aggregated position for each asset. So if you open two short positions, for example on ETH, the second one will be added to the first and their opening prices will average out and lot size will be added. Should I open a long position for ETH, it would basically sell a chunk from my shorts instead of opening a separate long position. In standard futures, however, hedge mode is turned on, which means that no matter how many positions I open in what direction and size, each of them will be displayed and maintained in a separate line item. It is better in case you want to hedge your positions in case the market goes against your expectations. Which one is better than the other? Well, at the end of the day, it is absolutely a personal choice. I wish I could turn on hedge mode on perps and I could see the distance in the spread on standard, but all things considered, it's alright. I'm sure that everyone can find what is best for their personal trading style. There are some features that caught my attention. One is the guaranteed stop loss and the other one is the slippage protection. In volatile market conditions, when prices are jumping and crashing like crazy within a split second, a so-called slippage can occur, meaning that some transactions would slip from their desired price levels. This can be applied to placing or closing positions and also for stop losses too. Bingex apparently has an advanced slippage control mechanism in place which prevents slippage in perpetual futures. This is great for anyone who likes to ride the waves of volatility, for them no slippage and accurate stop losses can save a lot of money. The other thing that sets Bingex apart from the rest of the major exchanges is the option to trade stocks, forex and indices with USDT. The idea itself is not new, Bitpanda has been doing something similar with their 24-7 stock trading solution, but that was not based on a USDT pair. In the case of Bingex, trading these other assets are also done with USDT being the counterpart. This means that you can actually carry out these trades in a fully crypto environment, no fiat currency is involved in this scenario. 
For some folks, this is rather important. The range of stocks is not wide, but uh, you have all the usual suspects here like Tesla, Apple, Google, etc. Forex is uh, quite all right. The pairs are plenty. Uh, we have all the major pairs here and indices are represented by the largest economies. And we have a decent selection of commodities too, like gold, crude oil or even live cattle. Of course, it will never substitute a professional stocks, forex and commodities trading environment. Having the option to do it from the trading panel of the exchange while using USDT as a collateral is quite amazing. One of my favorite parts in crypto exchange reviews is looking at the copy trading platform provided that they have one. Bingx has arguably one of the best platforms for copying and I will explain why. Before I dive in though, it is important to understand a fundamental challenge that exchanges face when they operate a copy trading platform. On one hand, they have to be well positioned for professional traders to join and trade on their users behalf. This means that the traders would need to get a decent share of the profits they generate for their copiers, otherwise they will just settle down at another platform to trade on. Moreover, traders also need to have a sizable copier base in order to make money. How do they attract a lot of copiers? By posting bombastic ROI results all over the platform and social media. On the other hand, however, copiers would leave the exchange if they feel like they have been deceived. So it's a fine line of protecting the interests of copiers and traders at the same time. Different exchanges lean on different sides of this scale. Bingx seems to be taking the side of the copiers in this question. Even though they allow the traders to crank up the profit share ratio up to 20%, in return, they share the most comprehensive data about their traders on the profiles page. Any trader trying to hide their losing trades would have a difficult time on this platform. There is the usual classification of traders as we already know from other exchanges. We have trending, conservative, rising star and the option to see them all. The great thing is the filter option here as I can finally set the criteria by days spent trading. My own personal analytics always considers at least 6 months of trading history to qualify as a representative model. On the other exchanges, oftentimes it is tiresome to scroll through all the fresh profiles just to find some of them which are actually with a long-term proven track record. Let's take a quick look at this profile just to show you how many aspects Bingx is showing. The first thing that comes to mind that it is nice to have instructions by the trader about copy settings. This puts things into perspective for copiers. Then we see the types of accounts the trader uses. It can be standard or perps or even an external source like Binance connected by an API channel. On the left side pane, we see quite a lot of details about the performance broken down by all these different aspects. The best thing is that I can select 180 days as a scope so I can quickly get an idea if this trader is copyable or not. The panels on the right side show graphics of performance. Again, setting it to six months range will show me quite accurately what happened in the last half a year. I can also see the profits week by week and how the trader was doing regarding risk taking over time. Finally, there is a breakdown of the coins traded and obviously this is nice too. There is of course an option to see the open trades, not with a lot of detail, but the main thing is that they are there. The historical trades are also visible, however only back to 3 weeks. So I cannot copy the positions manually to analyze the data on my own, except for this limited time period. I wish Bingx would remove this restriction and allow the older transactions to be inspected as well. Finally, we have the copiers tab where we can see how much money the copiers made. Not super relevant, just a nice things to see. The copy trading platform of Bingx just seems to be amazing, the wet dream of all copiers. Plenty of traders, great transparency, the only thing missing is the unlimited history check, but I hope the limitations will be lifted eventually. Soon I will start looking for talented traders here and I will gather as much experience as possible. After a few months I will share everything I learned and I will make a dedicated video to Bingx copy trading. Unramping is always a critical aspect of any exchange. Turning fiat into crypto has a tremendous amount of legal and regulatory conditions which usually require the users to perform a full KYC identification. The exchanges which prioritize user privacy have very little chance of obtaining a license for a direct fiat conversion solution. We have a nice Catch-22 situation here. On-ramp easily and get yourself KYC'd or keep your identity private but have more difficult and costly methods for obtaining crypto. 
Bingx has no direct conversion, but a range of third-party solutions separated into two different categories. One is quick buy for instant purchases. This is for bank cards and P2P transactions. As I am located in the European Union, I have an easy crypto purchase option by card. The conversion fee is probably the lowest among all the other methods. At the time of the recording, I swapped 100 euros from my bank account uh, with my card and received 104.86 USDT. At that point, uh, 100 euros was worth exactly 107.15 US dollars. So the fee paid for this transaction was basically uh, 2.3 dollars, which boils down to a 2.14% of charge. The other conversion methods are not cheaper either. They all go from 3% to around 6 or 7% eventually, which is not ideal to say the least. The second method is bank deposit, which is also done by a third party called Legend Trading. An extra layer of KYC is needed here too, and the worst thing of all is that this is almost as expensive as the other ones. At the end of the entire procedure of getting identified and transferring money from a bank to their bank, the following fees are charged. There is a network fee for 1.5%, there is also a processing fee for 3%, and if all this wasn't enough, the conversion from USD to USDT is also slapped with a 1.1% fee. At the end, this is 5.6%. I just simply refuse to pay this much for a conversion, that is just not going to happen. Instead, I will just use Bitpanda or Bitget to directly on-ramp my fiat by bank transfer, totally free of charge, no conversion fees, no charges, no BS fees attached. From there, I would just withdraw the USDT over BSC or Tron network and pay a dollar at most in network fees. This is the area where Bingx still has a lot of room to improve. I understand that obtaining all the licenses and meeting all regulatory conditions is tough, but hey, losing 5% of your funds upfront even before starting trading is just too much. A major aspect of every exchange should be how much they are charging their users for basic operations. Bingx has been a rather pleasant surprise in their pricing structure. On spot, there is a very simple 0.1% maker and taker fee, no surprises there. On futures, perpetuals have a maker fee of 0.02% and takers pay a 0.05%. In the standard futures version, there is a one-time fee at closing, which is a 0.045% charge. Obviously, as this is futures, the percentages shall be multiplied by the leverage used in the given trade to get the final cost of the position being opened and closed. The funding fee is also quite balanced. In fact, when I compare the funding fees, Bingx tends to have the lowest of them all. Of course, this is not a fee that exchanges make. It is strictly a P2P transaction between shorts and longs, so I assume the position directions are slightly more balanced than in the case of other exchanges. Furthermore, there are VIP tiers as well, depending on the volume a user generates. Once someone passes 10 million USDT in trading volume, would be eligible for a VIP upgrade, where fees are even more amazing. Now, just to put things into perspective, 10 million USDT in trading volume is massive. Even if we are talking about leverage trading, where the nominal value of the traffic generated can be multiplied by 50, it would still mean that you would need to roll over 200k just to reach the threshold. The other option is to have more than 50k in assets deposited in Bingx, that would also put you in a VIP category. Anyway, you get the idea, the more you trade or the more you hold on Bingx, the better your trading conditions are. In comparison with other major exchanges, this is one of the best free structures I have ever seen, so hats off Bingx, well done. There are also a wide range of different bonuses users can grab, like the daily check-in activity with different rewards, then there is one for a first deposit, a first trade, an extra bonus if you place your first trade right after registration, and so on. Promotions are also plentiful, a quick look at the ongoing events makes it obvious that Bingx is not messing around, they really take this thing seriously. The point is that if anyone decides to register, just make sure to check the bonuses and promotions page first and apply for all the possible rewards because there are many to be applied for. Bingx has been one of the most pleasant surprises I've had in a long time about centralized exchanges, it really seems like they have it all put together. 
The user-friendly design of the products are just amazing. Seems like they truly understand the most common pain points of the sector and they are trying to come up with a better version of the same. This is true for two separate versions of futures trading, the plentiful data in copy trading and the variety of assets to trade. All things considered, I am really happy to be on Bingex. You will find all the official links in the description field below. Make sure you register with that one to be eligible for some further goodies. Remember guys, trade safe, big money out.